The whole thing is very, very scripted in such a way. And, and now you've raised the door on this. I'm going, what? You've shocked Adrian. And this is, so this yeah. conspiracy, I agree with one and two, but fuck me, three. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, if, if this is not the winner, winner chicken dinner, I don't know what the hell is. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I'm George. I'm Adrian. And it's about time <laughs> that we discuss not the moon watch, not the moon swatch phenomenon, but moon swatch conspiracies. What do you okay. mean? Okay. I feel that the whole moon swatch discussion is played out. Right. And I feel yeah. even I agree. in our position that we're a little bit more embedded than the average punter on the street queuing up, but I we can't contribute very much to this discussion right now. Mm-hmm. But what we can contribute is highly dubious theories about <laughs> what's going on here. No, these aren't dubious theories. They're actually conspiracy theories cool. that, that we've Ooh. picked up from the street. What do you think? I'm good. Um, you are, we, are we going to somewhere in America, Area 51? <laughs> you know, I feel like we're going into conspiracy, UFOs. Um, actually, well, you know, it's an Omega, so it's been up in space. It yes. Could, it, you know, has it? Oh, oh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that now we're getting the moon conspiracies, okay, moon sports okay. conspiracies. Now I get it. Before we go into Stella, before we go to Arizona, we need to go to Gin Town because <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> segue <sweet>. goals. <laughs> this episode is so proudly brought to you by Four Pillars Gin which is my favorite gin and has been ever since I tasted it in Noosa, Queensland many years ago. And now, what do you know? They're the podcast sponsor of about time and this this one you've chosen for today we're gonna have a little drinks break later but for now you can just admire this very unusual colored gin i love it it looks like I can't, blood. I can't, it I, does yeah yeah. i can't yeah. wait to taste it yeah we're gonna taste that very okay. shortly so let's kick off guys quickly I'm, I'm gonna try and limit you oh my gosh i didn't start my stopwatch i'm gonna start it now i'm gonna limit you to in, in the middle in the middle, in the middle. <laughs> do it again, do it again, do it again, quick okay okay I'm going to limit you both to one minute to tell me your reaction to the moon swatch. And was it a good thing? Uh, it Just sheer confusion. <laughs> like, what is this? Why is this here? Do we need it? I love it. Okay. That was far less than two minutes. George? Um, I wanted it. I didn't want it. I wanted it. I didn't want it. Um, I was going to queue up. I, I, I asked a cousin to go and queue up for a uh, cousin in law to go and queue up for me. Um, and I don't know where I sit now. I, I'm still on the fence on getting it and not getting it. So it's, I, I, it's also interesting. My watchmakers have got them, but they sit in the drawer upstairs, not in, in on their wrists. So I'm, I'm still, I'm on the fence. I want it. I don't want it. And now I think it may be overhyped, but that's me. Okay. Well, my what about perspective you? on this is a little skewed because as you'll hear through this podcast, we were at Swatch Group before this was launched and had yeah. a couple of weeks jump on everyone. And I think that's really messed up my perspective. But the beauty of your short answers is that we have time left on my stopwatch. We have uh, 50 seconds left to do a wrist check. Oh, <laughs> wrist check. Saved it. Saved Adrian, it. I got it, baby. I saw you both looking at me with those horrified eyes. We had a structure. We had a system. Adrian, what are you wearing today? I'm wearing my new to me uh, Bamford G-Shock. This is first... Is this first generation? First this is first generation. First generation. First wear. First wear. First, yeah. First wear. Wow. I, this is so cool to see this. And, you know, this sold out in record time. It's now trading over pricing. I, honestly, I is love it? this watch. I can flip this. You may. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Uh, I wouldn't dare. Uh, <laughs> go, go, go. Bring, bring oh, a card. Bring a card. Here comes a card. Flip Drum it on roll there. for the card. <laughs> but while you look, George, can you tell us what you're wearing, please? <laughs> oh. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Perfect. Jeez, I got plenty of these when we worked on a watch together. Um, <laughs> George, what are you wearing so today? <laughs> you've got first generation. Boom! I've got Look second generation. This is the second generation. This is the three blue um, Bamford G-Shock. This is the big G. I mean, this is the wow. OG big you're, G. You're, you're the big G to me. Um, you know, I had to have the one where you press the button. <laughs> I'm like, I want to press the button. Oh, I'm no. like, that. that's my thing. So, um, that's Andrew, what are you wearing? I am wearing the 
Tag Heuer Monaco Calibre 11, which is, in my mind, the only Monaco. And I'm wearing that because I'm off to Monaco this weekend. I'm sorry, boys. Ooh, la, la. 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 And I mean, you were there last weekend, George, so <laughs> I think we can hardly... Yeah, but ooh, la, la. Anyway, no, no, you're, yeah. you, you're, you're, you're going off. So, um, as you probably realise, this was pre-recorded. Um, so that so G is not released. It's not released yet. So we're yeah. getting it <laughs> in. But, you're kind uh, of getting it exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. Uh, double double G shock. Double G shock. Double let's, let's get a double mom. shot. Double shot. No, 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 it's bioceramic. I apologize. Uh, are you with me? Firstly, bioceramic. <laughs> anyway, okay. No, go on. I, I'm this just is like, about f- time that journalists spoke their okay, mind. Okay, so no, no. And people's words. First, firstly, I'm not a journalist, but um, <laughs> bioceramic. What? What the hell? What? So they're, they're, they, this, they're PR stuff this on this. This for me is no, just let like George finish. He's got a rant. I'm okay, just like, let's why? go. Why? Let's, go. How? let's keep poking <laughs> you. It's like every time I see this bioceramic, when it first came out and swatch, I thought, "Freaking hell, this is cool," and then I saw it and I was just like. Is it plastic? Is it recycled? Is it? I, I'm still. I cannot get every time I've heard some journalist kind of reel talk, that off, and it, I'm just like, is this bullshit or is it true? Is it? What is it? And is it ceramic? Does it? You know. And I know that when you look at the technical data, you're like going, yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. It, it, the the castor oil throws me off. I can't picture castor oil going into a solid object. No. Maybe. No. Okay. Adrian, go on. Tell no, me no, because no, it's, you it's, wanted to jump in on this. Because <laughs> for me, I think it's like the normal bullshit that you hear from a brand that's <laughs> and, going. And, and that's what I love. That, no, no, sorry, that's, that's what I love, but I also hate. I love when people call it out. But I hate the fact that we don't trust a brand so much that whatever they tell us, we think bullshit straight away. Their, their PR stuff, their marketing spill in it is... It's two thirds ceramic, one third bioplastic, and that plastic comes from castor oil. So it's it's supposed to be a bioplastic. It's, so I guess that's where bioceramic comes from. But how much of that is true? I guess only the people who do the mixing. No. <laughs> we're into we're deep into conspiracies. No, 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 okay, okay, trust okay, the material but, that's used to make I it. But I can't wait for a scientist to come and actually break it down to its raw elements and say it's this, this, this. You know, that for me, then I would go, okay, fine. I'm, I, 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 you know, I, it's, it's when everyone keeps on saying it's recycled plastic or ocean plastic as well. And these, oh, right, you know, no, but when, a, when, no, when anyone talks oh, to me sure, about yeah, ocean yeah, plastic yeah, yeah. This watches. This is a Pandora's and, box right and, here. And when you go down all of these routes, but you kind of go, well, Maybe it's brand new plastic that's just gone into the ocean for two minutes and it's come back out and here's ocean plastic. You know, that, that is, it, uh, it, yeah. it's like one. Do you know of these- what? We are totally honouring the conspiracy in the title here. <laughs> yeah. This is just deep fake yeah, territory. No, but, <laughs> yes, you're right. But I just look at this and I, I, I want the watch and I don't want the watch and I want the watch and I don't want the watch. But the thing is, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I just can't make my decision up on it. And each one, you know, for me, I like the the Alaska Project one. That one for me is just cool. I think it's sorry, a, sorry, it, sorry. Are we are we cutting? all of your stuff about the conspiracy thing fuck off stop interrupting me <laughs> you were just getting too alive. much of a flow i was I like i've got to shut this off he's gonna, talk, take, motherfucker. he's gonna take uh, over <laughs> he's gonna host again <laughs> uh, we could probably just leave that <laughs> you're on again you're off again george i'm always on and again off again <laughs> take top motherfucker <laughs> Okay. Um, so you, we've been through... The, like, but the Alaska heated, project is the one is I the want. the one you want. Okay, yeah. great. Well, look, let's... If there's anybody out there who doesn't know anything about this, I do want to give a quick recap. Let's give sure. a little context to this. So, and I need to start this story because we actually did get tipped off about this when not even Swatch Boutique managers knew. It was so strange. But this is Don't, the reason... You're the getting room. to it. We're getting to it. Conspiracy Theory 3. Please I mean, like, wait. Richard. He's going to swing at me. <laughs> I've got a feeling he's going to actually swing at me. Now, I'm, I'm trying to say this in the most humble way possible. And again, this isn't. this is not a humble brag. It's just we were told about it two weeks before and were part of a group of less than 10. In, and this was five media titles were invited to Amiga HQ thinking there was an Amiga launch. And what they did was unveil the Amiga... Swatch. 
George, you look petulant. You look upset. No, no. You look, I'm, he's, he's, I'm just gonna. I'm he's just trying gonna, to find uh, an appropriate card. Yeah. To flick at me. Hey, listeners. There's this. George does this visual gag through a podcast. It's so <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, we were invited to HQ. They unveiled the uh, Moon Swatch at that, and we had this this incredible sort of insight before just about anyone, and it meant that our perspectives of the watch were completely skewed because I immediately just thought this is so brave this is so insane it's madness and there was an expectation but there was not certainty about what was going to happen so that's why we're having this discussion now well when, when you were there was there a tone of we're being forced to do this from omega's point of view was there a tone of we don't want this Petros Protopappas, who's the uh, heritage director, the museum director. Rock star. Rock star guy. He is an absolute Legendary rock star. guy. Um, and so passionate and so in, inextricable from his, his love for Amiga is, it just comes out of him in waves. It's, it's quite visceral. So I was, you know, Luke Benedictus, who's the editor of Time and Tide, was there just saying Petros was for the Moon Swatch in complete conviction that this was going to be amazing but he started by saying i was i said no he, he started by saying i did not wow i did not understand so he talked about his journey to understanding so there was obviously a bit of division within the camp this was not just a unanimous mm -hmm. and i mean how could there not be what did no, you it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Huge, Gone it's, 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 it's massive but I'd, 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 i'm surprised there's been so much conversation around how this is a swatch not an omega yet there's been so much support from Omega for it. And so I, I, I didn't know that there was this um, press launch because I'm, I'm not big enough to get invited to. to um, <laughs> I don't think that to, was the to, reason. To, no, no, it is. It is. <laughs> Although I would, I would like to say that the video that I made did trend on Google. That's number one. <laughs> Sorry, what, 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 what's your YouTube channel? Bark and Jack. Is oh, that, really? Aren't you on Vimeo? <laughs> I am, actually. Are you on Twitch? I, I, I pay for it. <laughs> No. Okay, come on. Thought, is, is that a dating web? <laughs> That's Hinge. <laughs> but then, really? My friends tell me. <laughs> there's so much uh, controversy around what is this? Who was a driving force behind this? So it's interesting that the watch is sold through Swatch boutiques. The launch was held at the Omega. Maybe that was part of the strategy was to say, we want to put some power behind this. Let's do it at Omega. The watch isn't made by Omega. The watch is made by Swatch. Um, so th the whole thing has so many different layers of confusion about it. What I love about the whole activity, regardless of the actual product itself, was the strategy. The timing of it was oh, genius. genius. Yeah, it, total they, genius. They destroyed Watches and Wonders by launching a drop the mic. They dropped yeah. the mic. I mean, like before literally anything else. It, and, Patek, Tudor, Rolex. But also what was on people's wrists at Watches and Wonders. It was, yeah, like it was a if, flex to have if, one. If it was more of a flex to have that yeah. than 5711. Or 100%. anything, anything yeah. else. It was just like, oh, have you got a? Have you got the swatch? Oh my god! Oh, you know. And if you hadn't, it was like okay. Mm. Or hey, I've tried this. Every Instagram uh, wrist <laughs> shot, I was like, and that was that was a. It, it dwarfed it. it. They could have dwarfed it even more by launching it online that day of Watch and Wonders. But I yeah. think that but Reynard, the, you, you've and, mentioned a very interesting point there because that's where the conspiracy theories begin, because the the line even communicated to us was that these would go online at a certain time. Oh, yeah, there still would, waiting. That, there would, that this was not a limited edition, yeah. that there would be production sort of commensurate to demand. There was all of these, Yeah, this narrative. I keep on being told to just control. wait for it to go online. And since then, it's just continued to be, as you said, a state of deep and deep and deeper confusion. So we want to investigate the three main conspiracy theories. George has brought one to the table that is very dubious, but we've just got to allow it. Um, <laughs> but I, I thought I'd lead off okay. with the first conspiracy theory about why the Moon Swatch was launched in the first place. Uh, and that is around the idea that Swatch sales have been in decline to a pretty dramatic degree. Mm -hmm. And that this was the reason for this watch, to, to save Swatch. So, okay... If you're saying that, you know, we you can fact check this because you can look at swatch sales and you can say, yeah, they they are they've gone down, but it, it, 
you know, you think about Swatch, they haven't had the big kind of jellyfish moment, the pop Swatch, they haven't had for a long time that kind of wow moment. You know, Flick Flack, you know, was was a great thing when it came out. Pop Swatch came out and it was doing something really good. You've got the jellyfish and you've got some of those old pieces coming out, the art pieces coming out, but it's not. And then when they brought out all the metal versions and all the things, you went, Okay, yeah, this it is cool. It kept giving, it, it was another yeah. moment of, of and, and there hasn't been a moment for a long time. Even this this, this kind of um, ceramic, whatever we're going to call it, recycled whatever, that when they brought out that before this Omega swatch, there was not, people didn't really, uh, I didn't see it on many people's wrists. I didn't, uh, you know, they did a thing with Houdinki, they did a thing, they've done all these different things, but it's never raised the bar like this. Mm. There's, there's been a big shift in the watch buyer and their trends. And a lot of people, certainly over lockdown and COVID, people have had more money to spend. And there have been more and more people, not non-watch people, right? People who wouldn't be listening to this sort of thing are getting into watches and spending serious money on those watches. I wouldn't be surprised if that person who would normally spend 200 quid on a Swatch suddenly sat down and said, all right, we're not going to go to the south of France this year. Yeah, I've got three grand, four grand, five grand in yeah. my account that I'd normally drop on a holiday. I could easily invest this in an Omega, Yeah, right? And so they've lost that market. Also... So many people who I talk to who buy Swatch religiously do so at the airport, do so yeah. when they go on holiday to mark an occasion. I bought a Moon Swatch uh, to mark uh, uh, making a video in uh, Zermatt, Switzerland. It's that kind of impulse purchase and all of that stops. So I'm not surprised that their sales have gone down because of those two pretty heavy yeah. factors. But I feel like the market from the brand point of view has changed as well. Yeah. At Watch's Wonders, there was a big push for two-tone. And watches that we've seen that will be launched later on in, in the year, there's even more two-tone coming. Yeah. Brands that wouldn't normally touch gold are touching gold. And that highlights how much more money is being spent on watches. Yeah, I would agree. But two-tone for me, I, 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 anyway, that's another story because I, I think to myself is when I look at gold and watches, it, you've got to go into new materials. You know, So for me, when I look at two-tone, I, that's why I like, and I keep on saying about this ceramic, um, non-ceramic oil kind of um, plastic swatch. I like it because it's pushing the boundary of new materials. I, anytime a new material comes out, I want to, I want to understand it. I want to understand what what it's doing i do, i slightly don't agree with you about um airport sales in the sense of swatch because they had an online presence and i think when you're at home you did a lot of online shopping uh, i did i mean you know the amount of amazon delivery but maybe that's why they need this hype because otherwise they would have to invest in advertising Whereas if you walk past an airport um, boutique, yeah. it's big, bright, it's inviting, it looks fun, fun for both the yeah. kids and the adults because there's so many things to play with and it's an impulse purchase. Yeah, I, I think I, 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 I'd love to know the facts of everything going down, but I do see it. I, I think that they've, they've been trending down. Let's get down. some facts. Okay, I, so I've, I've, got, them, I think, I've got them right I think here. Okay, I think they've been trending down for the last... My prediction is they've been trending down for the last maybe five six years okay so 2020 5.59 billion 2021 7.31 billion now this is from statistics sorry, sorry. So, so they've gone up uh so they went down in 2020 yeah. and then they've bounced back in 2021 but okay. 2020 was still the lowest year in 10 years so it there's definitely a downward trend uh, so I think that if we're fact checking or yeah. myth busting the first conspiracy theory, I would say the first conspiracy theory bears out yeah. that swatch sales might have motivated some sort of a moment. The other thing about this price point is that it competes with the Apple watch. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, you're right. And the other thing is that there's a lot of a lot of little brands that are coming in and nipping at that price point mm -hmm. um and doing micro creative brands. yeah micro brands but they're doing creative things so you you you're right about the apple watch and wearables in general yeah where yeah. I, and the other That's thing is point. yeah you're totally right on every wearable you know you're getting more and and then you're competing with the phone as well mm. you know because you think about your telling time so you see on people's wrists where you used to see a swatch um you now see an Apple Watch, and you know, and it is the demand at the school schoolyard is 
is a is an Apple, not a Swatch. Yeah. You know, I know that sounds strange, but I I I always think my my kids are a, a kind of um, signifier for me of what's happening in school. And and you know, I put the G Shock on them; they love it. Of course, they love it. My daughter wears a G Shock, and she freaking loves it. But really, she wants a digital watch. Everyone at the schoolyard is has got a digital watch. Yeah. You know that's something yeah you're, you I, I, I you're right and the myth behind it and what I I think you know this thing about advertising I, I slightly don't agree because if you look at social media it's one single square mm-hmm. it's no, and so you everyone's competing for one square so it kind of means that big spend you're only spending for one square you you can say yeah i'm i'm sponsoring a youtuber or podcast or whatever it is but you're still competing with just that square so i think that this is the interesting thing is that we're now kind of seeing this kind of um, reduction down on on the competing of advertising. So, yeah, your myth. I, your I, myth. I, I think that's the strongest point is, mm. is around the uh, Apple. Apple Watch. Yeah. Well, look, I, I'm thirsty. Ooh, Good, I, I, Ooh. I, I, conspiracy theories are, are somewhat uh, dehydrating and, and uh, exhausting oh, yes, as well. So, shall we have a drinks break? Let's oh, do it. Okay. yes. <laughs> so, the drinks break concept is very simple. If you're Australian, are you choosing another? Or one? British? Yeah, I'm going to choose a different one. Okay. Um, then you will know what happens uh, at a certain point in a cricket match. The players come off the field and have um, buckets of gin. Buckets of gin. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. They have water. <laughs> we are very, very fortunate to be sponsored by Four Pillars, which is an Australian gin that has been voted the best gin in the world. So it's worth checking out. I have never tasted this gin. This is called Olive Gin. I was fortunate to break Adrian and George into Four Pillars Gin in the first episode, and now we're getting seriously <laughs> wow. Getting that's, a, that's a flagon of gin for, for Adrian. <laughs> Smells great. Don't drive home, Adrian. Um, this is uh, beautiful. Now we have a question from Matt, who is the founder of Four Pillars. He asks us a difficult question each Cheers. week. Um, Cheers. Let's go to the handy WhatsApp list of questions from Matt. So, Matt, ready for you? How does it quick give me some tasting Ooh. notes while I look at the questions? Oh, God, that feels stronger, that one. Yeah. This, this is, is lovely. The olive leaf gin. And I believe this is delicious with martinis. Okay. Well, honestly, it's actually really delicious. So, I it's really kind of like this. It's, oh. It's, oh, Christ. This is weird. Um, it's, so, go, so, go with the question. <laughs> so, Matt asks Ooh. questions that have one word answers so let's go it uh if you could only have one genre of watch what would it be dive dress sports etc adrian field watch tool watch sports watch all right done cool thank you very let's have much another sip and then move on to the second conspiracy theory cheers gentlemen cheers guys <laughs> game on Mm. <laughs> that's gonna Australian hit. Botanicals, that's going to hit. So this, I did that so the second one would be even more fiery. <laughs> <laughs> the second theory is something that has gone largely, I think, undiscussed. And I think it needs to be mentioned. Adrian. <laughs> so your theory was that Swatch are struggling. I think both Swatch and Omega are struggling. And seen this from quite a few angles... Uh, Omega have been pushing up their prices really quite heavily. We've seen the the um, the Speedmaster Pro go from what a three thousand pound watch, three and a half thousand pound watch, up to six and a half thousand pound yeah. watch. That's that's a, a hefty price drop over probably four years, maybe. Uh, and so there's there's been a real push for them to do more complex movements, bring everything in house truly to do uh, higher performing movements and then more variations of their watches, as well as this price increase. So that, along with this, Moon Swatch, I feel shows perhaps a weakness or a struggle. What do you think? Look, I want to add two very big difficulties that Omega have faced in the last few years, and that is that they have been COVID-struck to a degree that is just, it made me feel sad, actually. Like, I felt sympathetic. The Bond movie... Yeah. Was that yeah. slated for release in like 2011? <laughs> yeah, it was and, and, it, and it was a brand new watch for that that yeah, thing and then the watch had to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're so right. So to your point, I, I completely agree, Adrian. I think that there's been a really strident push to position the brand even higher 
and, and to, to put it into different competitive sets, which I think in some respects is, is justified because it is, I think, a great value brand for the money you spend in terms of the quality of the movements, the finishing, the luxury feel of an Amiga. It, to me, it feels on a par with the greatest luxury brands. But you add Bond in and then there's another one. Japan, the Olympics. Yeah, you're yeah. right because we haven't seen the Olympic timers. It was it was rushed. It, 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 All of it, those limited yeah. editions. Yeah. Yep. Printed yep, yep. in that way. I mean that that was a crushing blow. And for for the for Amiga, these quarter year, you know four yearly activations are just such a throwdown. Like there needs to be an massive and you and saw it a lot. Return. You would have seen the uh, the the timing and the whole thing, but. Everyone experienced it through TV, and really, everyone went on, went on Netflix and other things, and they didn't and watch the Olympics. Later. So again, yeah. that all sort of got yeah. pushed. So I just think that they were both, and and they took away Amiga's ability to cut through yeah. at those moments where they're guaranteed to be front of mind for a period of time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, and you you mentioned this, and it's something in this whole thing. I felt in COVID versus other brands, Omega and Swatch went to sleep. They, they, I know that Bond and I know the things, but when I look at it as a brand, as a thing, you know, there was, you see every other CEO. And I, look, Reynard is a genius. I really absolutely think he's an amazing CEO. But you saw most of the CEOs, I would say there's about three brands that went to sleep, but the CEOs were out front on YouTube channels, on mm -hmm. podcasts, on anything they could do to say who I am. Chris Granger, mm. um, uh, you've got Julien Tournay from- George uh, Kern, he was good. George Kern. Yeah. Christian Selmani. Yeah, yep. Look, we, we can even, yeah. Yeah. boom, 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 boom. Everyone- And I must say, I did do one Zoom uh, call with Reynald as well. He was in yeah. there, but it, it was, I agree that there was a sense of, and to me, it was almost like a boxer just dazed on the canvas. Like how many times can we be yeah. hit? How do we, we don't really have a contingency for these two huge moments. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I, th I, th I think that, but I, I would say is on both. I think that was the thing is, these guys pivoted very quickly and it almost felt like the lawyers had come in at Omega and Swatch and said, you're not talking to anyone. We're going to be saying this. We're going to be doing this. We're going to. And, and I just felt that that was the kind of conversation that was happening in there. And I think mm. that, you know, didn't matter. Most brands pivoted very quickly to talking out and talking to the customer, listening to the customer, jumping on everything they possibly could. And that's where I look at it. It was unusually quiet. I agree yeah. with that. And so, it, it was it was for a brand that is just such a monster. Mm -hmm. It was a strange, I mean, it was just the strangest two years of, of our lives, I yeah. would say. I, mean, oh, yes. I don't know about you guys, but it was bizarre. Yeah. And that was another bizarre part. Amiga was quiet. <laughs> yeah. No, so no, I agree no. with and, that. And, and that's, they weren't the only brand quiet because there was one or two others that literally you were like are they still alive mm. but the thing is when i look at it i think that you're t you're totally right i think both brands Adrian, you're you're right about omega and swatch i think both of them needed something to go oh yes they're back they've dropped the mic they've they've as you said, watch them wonders. Mm -hmm. They wanted to come back mm -hmm. and just go bang, yep. and here we here we are. And you know, you saw George Kern doing it um, with the Breitling aeroplane. You know, that was a great way of kind of interacting with press because he wanted to pull away from watch them wonders. You know, watch them wonders. It was that kind of big kind of I don't know uplift in the watch world, and you had two knocks. Really, I look at it, two knocks before it happened. Mm. You know. Watch and Wonders, the so all the brands should or could have released watches before Watches and Wonders, and they were told we're not allowed to. So guess what? Between that time and that time, and from January until until Watches and Wonders, you're not allowed to launch. So that is game on for other exactly. brands. One of the rules. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you sign up, you're not allowed to launch. You you. So you've basically giving all the other brands. Oh, this that's massive, when I. That's win. when you want to. No, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. what what does happen? Reynard and and the Swatch Group go boom. This and is the thing. On that note, I want to round out before your conspiracy yeah. theory. In one word, let's go back to a drinks break rule: genius or madness. One word, Adrian. It's killing you. <laughs> right now, genius. It might change for the future. Ooh, this is hard. <laughs> I gotta, how do you how do you answer? Um, uh, can I can I be a genius? A genius. Genius. No, I, I I would actually say I think it's I think it's genius because 
I, I, yeah, I think it's genius. I what, wanted, what do you I wanted think? at least one madness. I wanted no. two madnesses because no. I'm I've been genius from day one, yeah. and I actually uh, there are enough high low collaborations that have just reinvigorated both brands mm -hmm. in fashion. Look at it. You've got yep. bloody yep. Supreme Times. You no, know, no, uh, but, okay. Added, yes. uh, added, uh, no, well that, but also you know you've got bizarre food brands. You've got 3M times Asics Tiger. Like you've yeah. got these completely bizarre okay. collaborations. But, and you're a collaboration king, George. No, okay, <laughs> and and this is for another time. But you look at that, and the thing is, most collaborations are with other brands that are outside That's true. of their own stable. Right. So you think about watch brands, you think about you think about fashion brands, and normally collaborate Louis Vuitton and Nike. Yeah. They collaborate with someone outside of their thing because they are scared. Um, They're scared, and I, I just have to throw it to Adrian at this point. Adrian, do you still think it's like Fiat in a Ferrari? Yeah, I do. Because no, I, I, oh, I said oh. Lamborghini and, and, v, and v, VW. Did you miss Adrian's video on this? No, I, 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 but I thought it was Fiat and Ferrari. Now you're saying Lamborghini and, uh, and uh, VW, but it's Fiat and Ferrari better. Yeah, and, and it's and a lot of people hated that uh, idea because they're like, oh, yeah, but what car companies own different car companies. Yeah, but we're talking about a branding. This isn't a collaboration where someone's done a little bit of interior changing. This is a full... It would literally be like Fiat taking the best selling Ferrari model building in their factory and using a Fiat engine. They did. It's called the Dino and it was a Fiat Dino. Um, so it came after. And but it wasn't was, there something about it that, that made no, it so not a Ferrari? There was the Dino um, that came and then the Fiat Dino came out afterwards. And Dino was, and it had the name Dino in the yellow and blue. It, it, anyway, this is another talk. But I remember the story behind that. But I think it was something, but but this is a weird thing that doesn't happen often. Yeah. Um, so why is it genius when it seemed like it was madness when I, on your video? Because sales have gone up for, <laughs> for um, Swatch and sales, I've been told, this could just be whatever, I've been told that sales for the Speedmaster, still Speedmaster from Omega, have gone through the roof oh, yeah. because the, of this. You, you go to the boutique around here and, and they're just like, don't ask. Yeah. Don't ask for a Speedmaster, it's done. Okay, look. I, Conspiracy theory two. Let's just quickly recap. I think we can agree that both Amiga and Swatch have been affected, as you said. You have your own conspiracy theory, yeah, George. Come I, at me, man. Just, this whole thing about collaboration for me just annoys me. So I'm just going to come back to that because because you just cut me down and you can't. Um, but what You're I would in say. My house. <laughs> Literally. Um, really um, no. Um, why I'm saying is that this is them frightened of collaborating with an external brand or an external person like Time and Tide when you did your Zenith. Mm. You know, this is that thing of, you know, letting the reins out and saying, this is what I want to do as a... So they've gone, no, 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 we'll collaborate with ourselves. Basically, that's what they've done. They've said, we're going to collaborate with ourselves. So for me, I think this is not as, as what we could categorize as a collaboration because collaboration is an external person coming in, mm. fragment it's, and... It's ext group. external group thinking, yeah. whereas this is internal group. This is internal. So that, that for me is more like a caring group that's mm. Gucci and Balenciaga doing a collaboration, not Louis Vuitton and Nike. So right. those, those are my two seconds. Third conspiracy theory. Third conspiracy theory is it is your fucking fault. <laughs> it is your fault. It's all of you journalists' Let fault. It, out, it was Let the it ten out. of you wow. going over to Switzerland. <laughs> he is clipping the shit out of his mouth. I'm <laughs> really sorry, but this is, it is your fault because you, you, Justin Hass sitting outside an <laughs> yeah. Omega with a sleeping bag, sitting there, putting it up onto Instagram X amount of days before, you guys going over. I mean, Omega and Swatch literally <laughs> She drained you of every marketing thing that you could do. And then, you know, like Justin doing that, then there was someone at, in Paris and this, it, it was just like, and then you do your film of the queue. Of course there's going to be more bloody queues because it's your fault. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I, I it's not even a conspiracy theory. Hold back, it's just like you... <laughs> George, I just wish you'd tell me what you thought about it. <laughs> Can I, I just need a little gin break. <laughs> Bastard. Mm. Do I get a right to reply? Of course you get a right to reply. You can can you cut him off right now? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mute. My mic's not working. I'm going to do the most unusual thing here and say, I think you might be right. And it's not wow. and it's not just because our video has you know over half a million views. It's also because 
in that two weeks of time before the launch, the real purpose of the launch. And I want to go back to that moment. That was a really interesting moment when they lifted the, the silk off all these. They had the 11 watches lined up on, on easels in a room. And they it was had, a beautiful room as and well. When you asked a very good question before. You said, who was there and what, what was the vibe? There was Reynald there. There was Petros Protopappus there. So Reynald is the CEO, president yep. of Amiga. We have Petros, the, the heritage director, and we have Mr. Hayek there. Yeah, another god of the watch world. Things are serious. Someone's getting fired or something big's about to happen. And then, of course, the mallet will be open in Swatch stores and in Omega stores. And this product will not be sold in Omega stores, only in Swatch stores. And now go and have a look at this collection. I just want uh, that you get inspired or critical or whatever you want. And I don't, our team didn't work for Omega, so we weren't getting fired. So we ruled that one out. But when they lifted the silks off... Did you think Reynold was going to get the chief job? Because, like, standing there, I would have probably thought... Do you know, I was really confused. Well, our team, like, Luke was, was live WhatsApping me the whole time. I couldn't be there because we were already in Geneva. But Luke was live WhatsApping me the whole time. He's like, I'm really confused. Uh, there's all these... There seems to be some, some releases about to happen, but Mr. Hayek's here. He's not normally involved. There's a strange atmosphere. Uh, and what happened next, the most shocking thing was not... Here it is. Here's the promotional video. Here's what you say about it. Here's the press release. It's just been sent to you on email. Go away. Here's the embargo. See you later. They lifted the silks off the paintings and then said, effectively, what should we do? And for the first wow. time, for the first time ever, for the, we were asked, journalists were asked, and there was an interesting mix there. There was hype. There was hype beast there, yeah. high snobiety, GQ. Uh, Rake and Revolution, Time and Tide, Fratello, uh, I think that was all. So there was a mix of half lifestyle, half yeah. watch publications, very, very small group, and it was a think tank. Yeah. We, this is what we're going to do. So they milked you for... You, so you that, look shocked, Adrian. I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked, and that kind of makes our points valid. Just that statement there of a brand as big as Omega asking journalists, what shall we do? Just screams weakness and fear. That's one take. See, I think it's I think it's bold. I think it's strength. I think. I th I th I th I, I, but how? Uh, that, that's like you. That's just blown my mind. I, I can't think of an analogy. <laughs> that, that 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 just screams. You can't imagine Apple going to a, a, a group of journalists saying, "We've launched potentially the biggest products within the past five years, maybe." Yep. The most impactful product, uh, media-wise. So and here's asking, you two preloaded on your device. Terrible idea. Should have had people in the room to ask. Yeah, I agree with that. It also damaged you too. Um, <laughs> they're now considering, and they're now looking at each other and want to. I, I, just each see other. It, I just see it as as, That's as weakness. So interesting. I see it the complete opposite way. But and what do you think? Well, no, do you know... I've Let me just say one thing. Let me just explain what I mean by strength. I think the strength there is, guys, this is such a fluid, changing, impossible environment. We have this product that is highly misinterpretable. This is a, this is a highly risky move. And for a brand like... For Swatch Group, who are, I would say... They, they don't want to shame They're not known the for, for rapid moves. They're not known for agility, shall we say. Um, they're known for doing things their way. And, and slow, like evolu evolution, not revolution, is, is one of the phrases they use internally. So for them to make this goose step that they know is going to freak the world out, I just think getting some sense of a pre-reaction from people, I think, I think it, that openness to me was like, I, I felt, obviously we were flattered as a team to be there. So I'm biased by but that. You, oh, no, 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 but, no, but, but if you were there, I think you would have been no, partly no. flattered too. 100% uh, be flattered. And, yeah. and uh, that shows the power of what you do, that a brand as big as Omega from the biggest watch group in the world, it's not like these guys are Oris struggling to figure out how to do PR on a watch launch. This is the biggest I watch know. group in the world asking you, be flattered, That that is, perfect but for them I, I see 
wow, you, you guys need help. I agree with you to a point. I think there's a degree of fear and uncertainty, but sure. I think the way they handled that was, was it? I just felt that that was quite embracing in some ways. It's so like this is these are brands that have lived in ivory towers forever. Mm -hmm. We just get thrown things, and that's why I was saying in COVID they became more in their ivory tower, and this they yes. broke they broke they, that, and then yeah. they did they broke the like, third wall in filming. It's it's that yes. person talking to camera and saying, "Now, what do you think?" I think it's it's a very clever move. The one thing I want to know is, did did your team take away a watch and did they because this is the thing that i was it was genius and i want to ask you why did you so, so luke from our team got his choice he got a neptune and this is of course the most controversial of all the yeah. models so he's he's had that since he had that since two weeks before has, launch has it stained something i actually don't know if his has okay which is it sounds impossible that i wouldn't know that but I, I really don't know if it has i've heard a lot of i mean i've, I've seen the evidence i know i was with roy david off recently in geneva he grabbed it and rubbed it and showed me his thumb like it, it, wow. it's legitimate yeah but and the, there are there are substantiated rumors that that has been remo removed from production until this issue is this stabilization is fixed but we did have it at that okay, at see, that early me, point, that, and, and that, we, that that's genius. the level of trust as well. The strength. I mean, no, it was no, kind of bad no, because you to trust five journalists, no, but, but they were no one leaked. But you guys until sneeze about before. it. You sneeze to it's it's one of those things on your wrist. You journalists are going to other places, to other places, to other places, to other places. It's 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 a bit like a virus. You're gonna you're gonna fill this in. Justin Hass, when he was sitting outside that thing, and why I blame journalists is because then it was reposted by Ming and you and mm. and everyone else. Him sitting outside there two days before the launch, mm -hmm. he was sitting out there with a sleeping bag. Now he didn't get his from London and Oxford street he went over to paris to get his bloody watch so you know for me it's one of those things where the whole thing is very very scripted in such a way and and now you've raised the door on this yeah. I'm, I'm going what you've shocked adrian and this is this, so this yeah. conspiracy i agree with one two but fuck me three <laughs> i mean jesus christ i mean if, if this is not the winner winner chicken dinner i don't know what the hell is well look i, I uh did not expect it to go in in that direction entirely um i am glad it did because this has been awkward it's been Good. interesting. It's been I, I like that you're in the hot seat. You're in the middle of two of us and you're in the hot seat. <laughs> I've never heard someone scream like you have. <laughs> so in terms of like wrapping that up, I think all we can really confirm with this is that there's just this just continues to be a maelstrom of confusion. And I think the last point we want to make, which is not written down here, is a question to both of you. And because we didn't, we purposefully did not share our opinion earlier. I just wanted to raise yet another divisive, controversial yeah. question. Is there a chance with things just so tense around this subject at the moment that this genius activation, and I'm voting for genius with both hands, could be more of a curse than a gift in the end? Yes, uh, I, I, I agree with that idea. 100% a genius concept, the execution right now i think is more damaging to both brands because omega's name is on the watch but more so for swatch if you walk past any swatch boutique and just mutter the words have you got you will get dagger eyes they will they look miserable absolutely even more so than people working in rolex boutiques <laughs> uh, and I, I think that if that's happening on the shop floor, imagine how much stress is happening in the head office trying to yeah. run the inventory and the manufacturing. Clearly, there's an issue with the implementation, and that is going to be a big fault. I think that. I think that's going to be I think it be needs to come online as well. I think, you know, as soon as it comes online, this will reduce down all the problems. Uh, you, you just said about genius and, you know, is this, is this going to damage? My problem is that I think it's the wrong two brands. 
And my thing about it is I don't even think this collaboration should have, I think it should have been, and I know that I brought it out, I was um, brought it out as our first podcast, I think it should have been the Formula One. I think they should have brought back the Formula One and Tag Heuer should have done this because everyone would have gone, yes, genius. I think looking at this, there's no precedent for it. And yes, that's why everyone says this is genius. But when you look at where it goes, how does it, how does it go on from here? What other colours do they do? Where do they go? Is Sorry, you mean Swatch should have done a Formula One? But- no, no. I, th- I think Tag should have actually done the whole thing as 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 a new recycled material, um, brand new uh, at two hundred pounds. What about a Bro- Swatch times Tag Heuer Formula well, One? That, that would have that would have been nuts. That would have that, that would blow the lights but out again. But why I'm saying to you is, where does it go now? What let, let's let's Can't scroll. It just be itself. Let's, no, but let's scroll five years on the. Or, do they carry on this watch? Is it only for a year? Where does it go? Where can I see that? Is there going to be new colours, or are these the colours that are set for the rest of the rest of time? You know, this is where I'm kind of like, where do you get the next bite of that apple as Omega and Swatch? Because either it dies. And then it becomes mythical and, you know, whoever's got it, great, you know, and the people that have spent, you know, two, three thousand pounds buying it online. Well, well done to you. you you've got it. Or does it come the online? Then they bring out new colors. Then, they you know, there's an orange, a, a whatever, a, you know, a taupe color that's a new taupe color or whatever it is. Or they move on to the Seamaster and do it that way. But when I look at it, I'm thinking then it's milking it for the sake of milking it. And so so I, this is where I'm like, where does it go next? Where I know that um, like the brand like Tag Heuer, I could see it working in them. And I know you're going to rip into me in about two seconds <laughs> saying that I only Just talk about... Just taking So what, what, what are you wearing? So I kind of like... <laughs> no, no, no. It's We've not done that three episodes nice. and he's managed to get Tag Heuer in every single one. I'm I mean, not wearing a Tag Heuer today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. You paid me 50 pounds to wear one. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I think... And do you know what the great irony here, gentlemen? The, these are our opinions yeah. about this watch. The people have voted, George. Yeah. You, you didn't like it. You would have liked something else. The people liked it. Oh, my to God. To a point where, shall we just finish on this point? It was a cultural phenomenon. Oh, yes. It was mm-hmm. potentially the only moment, certainly in my memory, people talk about 84, the launch of the Swatch, that they had that longer span. The watch, the swatch at that point became a cultural phenomenon, and there has been nothing that has cut through the timeline anywhere near that extent until this again. So I just need to point out: we have a lot of opinions, we have a lot of feelings. We've vented some of those feelings. George has vented them very subtly and very, you know, in, in an in an appropriate and and quiet way. No, we we have Fuck a lot of you. feelings. <laughs> Just give me the card next time. Um, no, we have we have all expressed our opinions, but this watch continues to be insanely popular with mm-hmm. people. So I want to. Uh, in my my answer to that question is, uh, th- oh, there you go. That's harsh. Just throw that down um, for the people at home. Just just watch the video. I'm not going to read that out. It's too too rude to me. <laughs> it says but, you're fucking boring. <laughs> 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 Lastly, but certainly not least. What do we have at the end of each episode? We have B Y B. Bring your own. Yeah. B Y O I. We have B Y O I. Bring your own independent. This is where we introduce an independent um, and give a little spotlight to them. Andrew. Okay. I am going to bring the brand Baltic to the table. Ooh, oh, yes. Good show. French guys, great, great. Etienne Malek. Yeah. Look, these guys did something that, again, I think was it Not was true. one of the first moments in micro brand in the timeline when a watch was almost ubiquitous and yet a relatively small production micro brand it was one of those things that it got to that point where you just wanted one didn't it yeah. do you remember and the dial and, and if you actually put the sum of the parts it's not but it, it is and there's been so many brands that have copied this um but yeah you're right a baltic let's I, go I, back to the early models because that there, there's a bi compacts there but it's it's kind of going into something where you feel familiar with the watch. You feel yes. familiar, but it, it but you kind of then wonder what it is, and then you look at the uh, was it uh, seagull movements, and and yep. you know you actually look at the, some of the parts, and you think 
Well, why is it that? What's you, you know, must it, wonder that, George, as as somewhat of a competitor in the micro brand definitely not field. But, but <laughs> I, 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 why I'm saying not because I, I like I, I I sit on respect from them. I respect them so much. I I I've not picked that genre of watches. I like retro modern in the seventies, eighties, and nineties yeah. type eras where they've gone back to the old uh, old time watches that I think feel very familiar to people. Mm -hmm. It's also brands trying to be uh, on this. Yeah. You know, as so many brands have even reinterpreted their history. You look at Jaeger Lacoutre, you look at any of these brands, they've gone back. But the biggest thing is Baltic has actually shown them up of how to do it. The, the dial depths, the what they've done on. I, I look at them and that's why I say to you is I'm not a competitor with them because I'm definitely not. <laughs> I, I sit on the side respecting and loving what they do. Yeah. Those guys are, are amazing. Sorry, I'm, I'm, it's your no. watch. Not no, my watch. but I appreciate. It. And look, for me, it was all about the Aquascath, the early models. They had beautiful um, sunray dials. Yeah. It looked cool. They just looked like they had a, a texture luxury. to them. They were luxury. Yeah, they had a luxury. And for that price ride. as well, I was just like you bronze can, models with yeah. with those lush dials. That they, they just nailed it. Adrian, love them. I've got hands on uh, with quite a few. I actually got hands on with their first watch, and there was something about it that just felt like these guys actually get it. Mm. They, these guys actually know what we watch enthusiasts enjoy um i got hands on with the most recent one the, the mr01 and it it i don't want to be too salesy with them but it just feels great i want to see them using better movement <laughs> adrian yeah, was, you're never salesy good uh, but but i, I feel like the, the movements don't do the watch yeah, justice i agree they're mm. they're, they're, they're producing the a gorgeous looking thing that is very well made um, and they need to get a better movement. And yes, it's going to put the price up, but people will pay the difference because it's it's great. And I love you pointing out, um, George, the uh, JLC. Yeah, massive fan of JLC. But there's something about this which just feels sexier. Yeah, and it just feels and better executed. They've they've, they've been the French on stylish. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like when you see a French or an Italian person, you just go, yeah. I don't know why. You're sexier than me. You look better than me, <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You know. Have you seen Etienne's Instagram? Well, it's because he is un unfortunately sexier no, no, and better no, than no, all no, of us. You're, and you're, he kite surfs and he has a Porsche. Yeah, I mean, no, no. Oh. You're, when I saw them, I, I saw them at Only Watch, and we came down in the lift, and I was just like. You guys are in the watch world, aren't you? And they went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were Baltic. And I was like, <laughs> awesome. And I grabbed their wrist and I was like, I love your watch. And I grabbed it, grabbed all the prototypes. So they had had like five up their wrist of prototypes. And, <laughs> and we were chatting. And I just went, these guys are so much more. They 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 deserve what they deserve. They, yeah. they yeah. you know, and what they've done is they've done a French way of doing it. And why I'm saying French way is they've they've just out quaffed everyone else in their way of kind of, you know, if you'd said, if you said this was uh, Swiss, <laughs> You you would have gone yeah, but it would have been a bit boring. Or but there's something about it that they've they've really pushed on the dials and things. Get it? They just get yeah. it. They just they get, just it. get it. it. Well said, um, team. That was a pretty extraordinary episode. Uh, I feel like we all need to lie down. Possibly with each other, just to you know mend some bridges. Is that, <laughs> I don't know. But look, thanks for listening to about time. And like, I think it was probably was it about fucking time that we had that conversation? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, I think that was so. therapy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was for therapy. Sorry. If you like what you heard, please check us out on Instagram. It's at about dot effing dot time, and we will be back with more. Really? I did, I, 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 George I, is grumpy. <laughs> George is something else today. I don't even know if there's a word for that for, for men, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Yeah.